Welcome to the classroom. It's time to make things real black and white. Note on studies are a great way to plan your value within a composition. But to get to the point where you're comfortable using them as preparation for a painting, it's good to start by analyzing works and see how composition is used. So we're going to practice doing note-on studies using famous paintings found on the Google Arts and Culture website. And I was going to show you on my PC, but I thought it'd be better if I showed you a video of doing it through your phone, since that's the way you're going to begin your note-on studies today. Once you open your internet browser, type in Google Arts and Culture, and you should see that website pull up. When you click on Google Arts and Culture, you'll be greeted by the homepage and in your phone's internet browser, you should see these three lines at the top. Click on Explore and scroll down to find artists. Rembrandt is a great option because he has such strong lights and darks. And when you scroll through Rembrandt's work, and this is with all the artists on the Google Arts and Culture site, it's not necessarily just their work but it's also works of artists who are similar to them. If you notice, I took a screenshot there, and I'm gonna scroll down and find other artists. You may choose an artist like El Greco because they interest you, but as I start scrolling through, I notice that the contrast of values is maybe not as complex as I would like, or maybe not as clear cut as I would like. It just doesn't strike me as being a particularly great work of art to try to do a noton study with. So ultimately I abandon El Greco and I go back to other artists. If you choose to go outside the artists that I recommend, please make sure that your primary consideration is like the boy there blowing on the match flame. It has something with strong lights and darks. I like John Singer Sargent. I would definitely click on his work and see if there are any examples. The Spanish Dancer is one of my favorites. I think that'll be great with a strong underlit figure. Take a screenshot of that. Click on my back arrow. Scroll through the artists. Additionally, you can type in the search bar and look up artists and those artists names will be in the assignment. You can have a list so you're not just searching forever to try to find someone who has work that would be good for this project. You can see Vermeer's a great example because he has strong lights and darks and we're really trying to get clarity for this so that we can start thinking about lights and darks and separating them in our mind. I take a screenshot of that picture. That process should go on until you've searched through the list of artists or you've typed in the search bar and looked up the artists that are listed on the assignment and you've come up with six screenshots. Here I'll search Caravaggio. You may have noticed his angel, that's the first image there, was also in Vermeer's list and that's again Google Arts and Culture is going to list artists that look a little like Caravaggio or whoever it is that you're searching for. So this David and Goliath that I click on, you'll see is unknown uh, underneath the title David with Goliath said. We don't know who that is. I'm going to take a screenshot of it. Maybe I'll use it, maybe I won't, but at least I'm, as I'm going through, I'm capturing the things that interest me and that seem like really good examples of lights and dark. I really love this one, the, how the dark hand cuts in front of the light figure. And I think, well, that's going to be great shapes. And the shadow from the other hand is cast across the figure. So I take a screenshot of that and I move back to arts and culture. So you have your six screenshots. Click on your photo album. You may see other images you're not trying to use. We don't want to include those. So go out of that album and hit the plus sign in the top left corner, and that'll allow you to create a new album. Title that album Notan, N-O-T-A-N. Save that title. When you go back into your photos that you have, it's going to ask you which ones you want to include in this new album. Select the ones you're going to use and bring them over into your Noton diagram, like you see these four images here. I have to go look for my other two, and then I'll be ready to go. You can also search under Categories here, and as you see, I scroll over to Categories and look down. There's a category called Baroque, and during the Baroque period, artists like Vermeer and Caravaggio were really pushing 
the contrast of light and dark. So this may be a good folder for you to scroll through to find additional images. And remember, you have to come up with six screenshots. Once you have your six screenshots saved in your Noton folder, even if you don't move them all in at one point, you can go into your normal photo album, select additional items, and then click the rectangle with the arrow, and just scroll down and ask it to move to a new album or your Noton album. So make sure you have all six of your screenshots in there. But we're gonna take one additional step because we're gonna print this out on one sheet of paper and we're kind of reducing this big giant painting down into a little thumbnail and we don't want all the margin and all that other stuff. So we're going to crop each image like you see me doing here and save it that way. So when you click on the image, there's edit in the upper right hand corner, right above your home screen to the right is the crop tool it looks like two little brackets to make a rectangle. You'll click on that and drag the corners of the crop tool in over your painting and try to just crop out anything, even if it's overlapping the painting a little bit. Get rid of the extra stuff and save each one of these, click on done, so that you have your six thumbnails now. They're cropped down to the size that we need and it's just the painting itself with none of the margin from the screenshot. So now we have all of our thumbnails reduced and cropped, and I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. And since the screenshot goes back into my normal album, I'm gonna click out here and click on that image, select it, ask it to move to my Noton album, just so that everything for this project is in one neat little place. Now that's moved, I'm gonna go out of this album into my Noton album. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to op open the image of my six photos. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to crop that down and then I'm going to share that to Google Classroom. And when I do, I want to make sure that I retitle that with my last name comma first name underscore Noton. Once you've proofread your item and retitled it, you just have to select the folder that you're moving it into, click save here, and then upload. And then I will print those images for you so that when you come to class next time, you have them to work in the way that I'm going to show you in the remainder of this video. Try to be as consistent as possible when you're setting up your workstation so that you get into a predictable routine flow and that should always include your supplies being within reach of your surface and having the same supplies consistently. So you always have rag, medium and cleanup, solvent, brushes, paint, and then of course your workboard. One last thing you may want to grab, especially if you're sort of particular, is a little ruler. After you've modified your images that you found on Google Arts and Culture, you, the printout will be waiting for you and your next job anytime you work, especially early on as you're getting the hang of things, is to put your reference image right next to your paper, your canvas, your work surface, your picture. However, this setup is wrong in a sense because I'm a right-hander and so I should always have my reference image on the left hand side and my canvas on my right hand side so that as I'm working I'm never covering up what I'm looking at and I want to have it unobstructed so I can flip my eyes back and forth. Now you'll notice this is already set up sideways but if you haven't drawn in a while or if you're trying to recall the, the process to drawing if you think back we did a lot of tricks like drawing upside down, um, drawing angles only, thinking about negative space, monsterizing. If these are new, you may want to review some beginning drawing tips. But this is great that I've accidentally set this up incorrectly. 
because initially it's sideways and that's going to make my brain look at it differently and focus only on shapes. But now I'm going to further modify it by flipping the drawing board completely upside down. So the main task when doing a Noton study is to think about lights and darks. And we have several different examples so that you have to solve the problem in slightly different ways. To begin with though, we're just going to drag this line across and these are studies. So that means they shouldn't take forever for us to do. So if you're planning on having these perfect, perfect drawings, that's not exactly what we're going for. I will make the concession though that if you're a particularly neat person and you want to use a ruler, you can line that up, drag that across, uh, because that can actually expedite the whole process. You can speed things up by using a ruler and that'll keep you from fiddling around with your lines. If you wanted to, you could measure the overall size of this. That's about seven inches, just a little bit under. So you could make that measurement. A little trick that I sometimes use is I'll put my fingernail on the side of the piece of the paper and I'll lock in my grip on the pencil and then I'll use the paper itself to be a straight edge. And this is about three and a half ish, ish. And so you can even eyeball. I don't know that you need to do a ton of measuring. We want to get to that point about that quickly. From there, it's really thinking through. So I like that the camera is back a little bit. We've already gone through a couple steps to reduce this and simplify this. If you are having difficulty, one great strategy is to use a black and white version of your image to check the values in the colors that you're seeing. And to do that, you just go back into your photos, select the image that you're working with, and you can click above your home screen after you click edit above your home screen, click on those three little circles and scroll over until you see mono. And then I wouldn't keep it black and white, but just look at it and then discard your changes and flip back to the color and see if you're assessing those colors correctly. Another strategy is to squint at your image, which will simplify what you're seeing. So if you look at the simulation here, looking through your eyelashes, you see a blobby kind of version that'll take away the complexity and help you assess your value. And finally, a last strategy is in your pocket. It's the off screen of your phone. It used to be called a Lorraine glass, but if you look at this reflection, you can see the water bottle dulled down into just the most dramatic lights and darks. That helps you see the simplified value. But I'll show you in this particular example here. It's really easy to see the dark shape that runs along the prodigal son's body and the father's red cloak, that dark shape in the background. But when you're doing a Noton study, you have to really ask yourself, is this red a light or a dark? And sometimes the question is as simple as, not what color is it, but is it in the light? Is it receiving rays of light? So you can see that this figure, I'm not sure if you can make it out on the video, this figure in the background is not receiving light. I'm not going to draw a little oval back here because that would be a waste of time that is going to get covered over by my darks. Remember in a Noton, you get two choices. You get light or dark. You're having to simplify everything into one of those two families. I do think that the prodigal and the father are receiving light. When you look at this drawing, there's a real strong chance you're gonna think that I'm not a very good artist, and that is certainly open to discussion. But what I'm trying to do here is define this light area. You can see I made some small corrections, but I'm not gonna labor over it. And I'm not going to necessarily on my first pass look at this little dark shape here that looks kind of like the bat symbol. I may come back and add that later because I think that makes sense to include it in the darks. But I wouldn't want to get super, super specific and then say uh, like, oh, here's a little eye and I have to put that eye in my image. I think that's a little excessive. Overall, what you want to do is get the big idea of lights and darks. We don't really want this painting to take forever. 
This is a study. So it's not going to be a super refined drawing and it's not going to be super detailed. So as I said, I probably won't do this. I'm going to cross it off. I see a figure over here receiving light and the front of this figure's cloak receives light. But there is a shadow shape within it. So something like this. All of this other detail, there's a figure in here, there's the oval that we already crossed off. That's all in shadow. Remember to squint. If you need the help of using grayscale or mono on your phone, you can use that as a tool. More important than anything is you developing your thinking, considering how do I group these things? What's light and what's dark? Uh, as I squint down this bat shape that's the side of the face, I think it really encompasses more of the whole left side of the face or bottom, <laughs> however you want to think about that. The right, I guess, is what it should be. And that it comes down here and joins with the shadow of the sun. I'm not sure that it would be as small as I've made it. The hand is only visible because of the shadow on either side of it. So I'm going to include the shadow. And that's, that's open for debate where that is. And then I can be a little more specific in some of the shapes that I see here. This is uh, this weird, I don't know what I would compare that to, like a, a hook kind of thing that cuts into the sun's clothing. But again, when it gets to here, this is really shadow underneath the hand. So I might eliminate some of that. At this point, this is probably looking like a pretty terrible drawing. That's fine. When you go to use your brushes, I want you to be deliberate about trying every single brush because that's really the only way you're going to get used to it. And you see that even though I have the super, super small area, I grabbed the biggest brush I possibly could. And I'll try to reiterate over and over through these videos the importance of the blast principle. James Gurney talks about the blast principle quite a bit. It is big brushes first and then your large areas. Accents last, soften edges, and of course take your time. But those first two big brushes and large areas, those are really important to focus on. So, we have here your India ink. This is what we're going to start with in these Noton studies. Let's see if I can set it here so you see it in frame. And I'm going to try to control the amount of India ink so it's soaking into the brush. You can see it kind of going up the bristles. I don't want tons. I don't want it to drip off. But I do have to make a decision whether it's dark or light. And that's thinner than I wanted it to be. This might need to be shaken up. Hopefully you can see the difference between this light gray and the dark drip. As you're getting used to India ink and water media and water color, you're going to have to remember that this live edge right here, this drip, is super important for controlling your image. I don't necessarily want that to hang around too terribly long before I grab it again and move it across the surface. But if you were going for a nice even wash, that would be the way to do it is to constantly grab your drip edge and move it across the surface of your canvas. Take time to flip back, to pay attention, to look. I think this shape is a little off. Notice that I'm going to go right over that oval, the dark face in the background, and I'm going to use this same brush because with this brush you can get three marks. You can get a broad mark, you can get a line, and you can get a dot. We tend to think that these big brushes are super limited, but that's just not true. So I'm going to try to do even this portion, since it's a study, without tons and tons of detail. A big brush is going to help me focus on what's important and not get too bogged down in the details. Take time to flip your eyes back and forth. Is it developing in the way that makes sense? 
that this shadow shape is visible here and this shadow area is visible here. Now I don't want that drip to run through my other Noton studies, so I can rinse my brush out in my bucket. I'm just painting back and forth on the bottom. And I can use my rag to squeeze out excess moisture. Once you've squeezed out excess moisture, this brush is receptive to retake that ink from the surface of the paper. So if it's uneven, fine. If it's a little skeletal, it's just the big ideas. It doesn't have a lot of detail. Perfect. Does it have a clear understanding of what's light and what's dark? Fantastic. That's what you're going for. When you're finished, make sure you rinse your brush out completely. And that as you wipe it back on your rag, that it, it looks clean. The water itself looks fairly clean. The remainder of your images, hopefully if you picked good images, should present different challenges. For example, in this Winslow Homer painting, should that be part of the darks and it's gonna blob into the ocean? Or is it part of the lights and the ocean is a dark? There's not a perfect way to do it, but getting distant from it, stepping back, seeing what clearly shows itself as light and dark, squinting. I know I sound like a broken record, but those things are so important for understanding value and Noton studies are important in and of themselves for getting that concept locked down in your brain before we move on to do other things. If you choose to watch the remainder of the video, you'll see me complete Noton studies for each painting that I saved from Google Arts and Culture. It may be instructive for you to watch how I handle each painting, or you may choose to skip ahead to the end and see the final result and see if you can think through it in the same way and understand how I arrived at that solution. But regardless of what you choose to do, I would recommend that you think back through the video and see if you're comfortable answering these questions or if you feel like you've gained this knowledge through the video. Do you know which supplies you'll regularly need when painting? Do you know how to set up those supplies? Could you express to someone what a Noton study is? And finally, do you know how to look at an image and assess its values? Can you see lights and darks? Can you simplify it in your mind? And that's going to be super helpful for when you start painting. I hope you learned something and that you can use Noton Studies as you plan for paintings in the future.